everyone, live we are. Welcome to Power Mondo, the first episode of this series today. Yes, and look for every Thursday when we come back with a different uh, textile artist. Today we have a very special guest, listen sir. She's going to be here in a second. And I just want to tell you that we are live always for the reason that we love when you interact. Whatever you're watching, uh, there is a chat or a comment box. So ask questions there. I will get here, ask Liz, and she will answer directly to you. This is a great opportunity. Before we dive into the interview itself, let me tell you what Power Mondo is. We decided to invite textile artists from all over the world. They work with a medium called Power Paul. Power Paul uh, is a product that you can work with any type of fiber and textiles, and it hardens, so it's like a textile hardener. It hardens them. In the case of Power Paul, you can also use this, uh, whatever you create, whatever sculpture, wall piece that you create, you can also add the, leave that in the weather, meaning you, it can become garden sculptures, for example. So it's a very interesting pr uh, product. It's very popular in some countries. Uh, here in the US, not so much, but but we took, we took the job. We want to get the word out about PowerPoint as well, so you can get to know how to use this in what you make as art, okay? And we plan to be here almost every Thursday. Uh, there is a Thursday we have another event at Curious Mondo that we are not going to have, but bring a different artist for you. It's a limited time series, uh, so it's not going to go on forever. It's not a podcast, but I think you will enjoy very, very much. Every time we are going, of course, to talk about the artist, we are going to show some pieces and they are going to talk a little bit about the process. Uh, we, we have some city tours and studio tours as well as uh, very small tutorials, but where you can really get in touch with how to use these products. I think you are going to enjoy a lot, right? We start at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. So if you are in another country, as many of you are, Google the right time so you are here. And always go to CuriousMondo.com upcoming uh, events and you are going to see when we have a different interview okay uh, basically those are my announcements so now i want to welcome Liz Sincere from montreal canada how are you doing today i'm fine thank you awesome thank you so much for being here for this first episode Liz, i would like to to start with you giving a brief introduction about yourself and telling me how, when did you get in touch with art and you thought, mm, I think I like this? I got in touch with art since I was a teenager and uh, we really always used to draw and just black and white back then though. And I learned uh, watercolor in the tw when I was uh, 20, 23 years old, I think. So I've been an artist, a watercolor artist uh, for 45 years. Uh, so uh, it's really been in, in me for, for lo such a long time. I discovered, uh, like I, I continued to do watercolor for a long time. I did portraits actually, lots of uh, children, children portraits and I had commissions for those. So I did that for at least uh, 15 years. And then I decided to work towards another kind of um, you know, subjects. So I, I did watercolor and canvas, which was became more abstract looking a bit and more free. I did that for many years until I discovered Paverpol. And Paverpol, I call it my infinite medium. And I, I call it really the infinite room in which I am because it is infinite what I do with it. I have constantly ideas uh, to work with Paverpol. So that's in 2008 when I discovered it. I became a distributor in 2010 uh, in Quebec. And now I'm the importer for Canada uh, until 2015-16, uh, I think. So it's really uh, my favorite medium right now. I'm still, sometimes I want to go back to watercolors. But I'm not finished with uh, finding new ideas and uh, experiences with Paripal. So I think it's, uh, it's not something that I'll uh, stop uh, at all. It's uh, an infinite medium for me. Big jump for you, right? Because uh, you're doing watercolor, which is, it's a 2D approach. And then you went to yeah. the sculpting part. So there had, there had to be a, a huge jump in how you perceive how to translate your stories into art, correct? Yes, correct. And I, I found that it was easier for me to uh, sculpt 
I don't know why it was easier. Like I felt freer. Watercolor is a, one of the most difficult mediums. That, yes. that may be why. And uh, sculpture, you know, you just start and uh, working with 3D. I had been wanting to work on 3D for such a, t uh, a long time though, but I wasn't sure what kind of medium. I thought that, you know, the bronze is uh, lots of stages that before you do a bronze and it's very costly. I know uh -huh. some uh, bronze artists that work like that and uh, that's what they told me. And other kind of wood. I, I didn't see myself sculpting with wood or anything. I find that paper pulse sculpture is easy. It's uh -huh. an easy a medium and you can do, you can develop your own style with it as any other medium. I, I think it's a medium still, you know, it's, a, it's like acrylics. You have yeah. uh, acrylics as a medium, paper pulse is a medium. Yeah, and you have de developed, of course, your own style in the process, but as well as many new techniques that you can use this medium. Yeah. We, are, we are going to talk more about that. As you guys saw, uh, she has several pieces uh, around her, and we are going to be talking about each one individually. I just want to remind you that we are live and we love your interactions, so please interact with us and send questions when you have them. And you're going to be seeing on the lower third a few websites going through. These are websites where you can not only get more information about the products, but of course even get the products. So that you'd see three for this reason. You have the one for here in the United States, then Mummification art is the, the one that Liz carries in Canada, and powerpal.com is an international one because, Liz, we have many people here with us from different countries. So, powerpal.com is where you find the distributor in that specific country. So, you know, you're not left out if you're not in the US or in Canada. There are distributors all over the world. So, Liz, would you like to know the countries that are watching you right now? Because yes, we, call, yes. we call this Power Mondo. So the Mondo is US, UK, Canada, Hungary, South Africa, Ireland, Netherlands, Chile, Hong Kong, Belgium, Romania, Mexico, Australia, Greece, Germany, Bahamas, Ireland, and India with us today. So a lot of people, right? So go check where you have a distributor That's in your awesome. country. So Liz, let's I'd talk just about... Like to add a Okay, yes, sure. Shahar, yeah. because uh, I know that uh, I'm, I have my, my website, it's Mummification Art for Quebec, but in Canada it's Piverpole.ca. Just want to rectify that. Because, because yeah, for you Canada. do have more than one distributor there, correct? I think yes, we have six wrong. distributors. Six, wow. Six distributors, yes. Right, so nice. there's one in, uh, two in Ontario, one in BC, and uh, one in uh, Saskatchewan, and we have one in... Um, uh, I know I'd have to look at the list right now. Uh -huh. uh, Newfoundland, yeah, yeah. Yes, awesome, and, uh, awesome. So yeah. powerpal.ca as well. So Liz, let's grab uh, two or three pieces and talk about them before yeah. we go into some of the material you sent it to us. Yes. Okay. So uh, right now, I'm. Uh, I, I just like to talk about the uh, enamel technique, probably because uh, that's going to be one of. Uh, the little demos that I showed I, I, for this interview. So this is my, my uh, you know, own innovation that I'm really, really proud of. Uh, because in Quebec, I've been doing uh, classes uh, like for 30, with 30 people every two years, we do that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, a, it's a master class just for the Quebec, uh, usually the Quebec uh, teachers. And it's fun to find also with them a new a new subject, a new project for them to work with. So that the summer two years ago, I had been doing many experiences with this. So this is really, really fun and it's limitless. Right now uh -huh. I'm doing something else with the same technique. So basically it's like an enamel piece that's shiny like that that's that gorgeous. you can see. So th it's the skirt. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you some uh, enamel pieces that uh, I have ready on hand which will be turned into a project. It can be cut into pieces or like put this, like this one on a statuette. And so is, uh, is, 30... this, is this made with fabric, with, uh, with textile? Paverpole, only paverpole transparent and paper colors. Mm. And sometimes we can use acrylics too, to uh, mix, in, mix in with it. But it was like, a, I had to calculate the exact amount I wanted to do the, the, the sheet like this, I call it a, a skin. 
So I had to calculate the exact amount. I did numerous experiences, Shahar, before oh, I uh, bet. my, 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 uh, the thickness was what I wanted. It wasn't like breakable because you can see cool. there's another one here. Wow, so it's, it's really, gorgeous. really fun. So, uh -huh. yeah. Wow. So that's one technique that I'm not finished, uh, you know, um, doing experiences with. Uh, the latest technique that I really loved, and this was uh, Josie DeRue that uh, taught us to do the um, the rust the rust uh, fou fini. Okay. So I, I did the statuette with it. Oh. So you can see, and I developed another. I innovated another way to do the. Uh, here you can see the skirt here. Uh huh. It 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 does like a look of metal sheet effect. Yes. You know. So that you can turn whichever way you want it. You can fix on your statuette whichever Gorgeous. way you want it. Uh -huh. so I feel like clapping technique. for you. I think it's so well, thank beautiful. You. <laughs> yes. And you see the, uh, the one behind me with the spoons? That's the kitchen girl. Uh huh. So that's all done with the rust fufini. And it's all because I saw it, I saw it uh, uh, on the Facebook page, the Paper Paul Peeps. People were uh, asking if it if Paverpol sticked on metal, uh -huh. because Paverpol doesn't stick like on plastic or anything unless the plastic is inserted into fabric. Uh -huh. So, but the one you see here, it's all metal on a canvas. And that's gonna be, um, I know that you've uh, seen it, uh, Shahar, because I sent uh -huh. the files. It's gonna be a, a, another, uh, another uh, tutorial. For, yes. for you so it's all metal and i did add a bit of fabric underneath but it's all done with uh, pepperpole black uh-huh pepperpole black with uh, other related products with pepperpole and the rust fini, which yes, is sir. really i love it every time i i experience i do experiences with a new technique then it's non-stop you know i, I really yeah. love uh, you know yeah i so, really there love it that is. i That's think it's okay cool. so yeah uh, before we show more pieces, because I know, I know what people love to see is really how you create and what you create. But you sent us a, a small city tour of where you are located. Yeah. And this is something we want from everybody in, in this show when they come to show a little bit of where they live. Because, uh, Liz, I don't know if you agree with me, but it, despite the medium, art not only brings us together, but is a, a vehicle of showing different cultures and the beauty of yeah. diversity, right? We, we need to embrace diversity because it can only enrich us and not, never set us apart, but enrich us. So Liz did a, a small city tour of Montreal and we are going to watch that right now. Welcome to Montreal. I am Lise Cécile, Peripol distributor for Quebec, and this is Montreal, Montreal City. We are on the Mount Royal Belvedere, and you can see the St. Lawrence River over there, and all of the uh, uh, Montreal uh, beautiful uh, buildings that we have. And uh, we have a, uh, uh, a painting of uh, a tribute to uh, Leonard Cohen. We'll try to uh, take a video of that as well. So we are on the Mount Royal Belvedere. This is another great viewpoint of Montreal. You can see Pont Jacques Cartier with the St. Lawrence River again. And our Olympic Stadium where the Summer Olympics in 76 took place. Montreal is renowned for its bagels. It's one of the uh, icons of uh, food in, in uh, Montreal. So we're arriving on a cobble street in old Montreal. It's the most popular tourist spot in the city as well as the most historical. This cobblestone district is the original site of the city's French colonial origins. And here you can see Marché Bon Secours, and that is where all um, 
everything arrive on uh, by, by ship here at Marché Bon Secours. We're arriving soon at the Place Jacques Cartier where there's a lot in the summer, it's really the place to be. There's a lot of music and street performers. It's really beautiful. Lots of things going on in the summer. In saint anne de Bilby, there are many restaurants and this is one of my favorite restaurants. And I'm inviting you in. Come and see uh, the Herons, Dominique, the owner of the restaurant has bought from me. two golden herons that have spent most of uh, all of winter here and they're all beautiful and perfect uh, still so I'm very happy to see them doing well so we're still in the cobble, cobble streets here is Montreal poutine this is also an icon in Montreal Tourists around the world can't go, uh, can't not go to Montreal Poutine if they come here. They have to go. You can see all of the old buildings and the historical uh, buildings we have. It dates back far back as the 17th century, and they're all well preserved. And we are now in the old port of Montreal, on the Saint Lawrence River. This is where the Pippa Paul arrives by ship by cargo ship, not exactly here, but more down east uh, in the port of Montreal. But it arrives here by cargo ship and then it, it is, is distributed by truck in the other provinces in Canada. But I'm the lucky one because I live in Montreal and it's right here. And you can see there, those buildings are a masterpiece of architecture. They were built back in 1967 for Expo 67. Expo 67. It was one of the most uh, popular, uh, the most uh, popular world fair uh, in the 20th century. Beautiful, beautiful. I hope to visit there someday. I told you that I have a sister that doesn't live far from you. So yes. Yeah. Very, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this tour. Beautiful city. Have it you was ever? Still, uh, Go ahead. It was still cold but a week, two weeks ago, I think. So we don't have any snow right now. It's, it's gone, all gone now. Oh, good. <laughs> and have you ever lived there? Uh, you mean downtown? Uh, no, in, in Montreal. I, have you always lived in Montreal? Oh, if always, yes. I've always lived in Montreal. I was born in Montreal, yes. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. And what's the temperature there right now? Uh, right now we have like a hot wave, so it's going to be 16 degrees uh, this afternoon, so it's uh -huh. perfect. Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> sunny and perfect. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Now Liz, I yeah. know that usually you give in-person classes and I think you have a studio where you do that. Right now I know that's not possible, I guess you guys are on a lockdown again. But yeah. tell me a little bit how your classes usually work and what you teach on those. So I give uh, a lot of uh, classes for basic classes. I always give some because people, uh, you know, reach out to me to just learn how to do the statuette. So that's a, that's a one day class. I used to sometimes teach it in two, two, like two afternoons or two mornings, but it's nice to do it in a whole day. So it's like, you know, only six to seven hours uh, six of class. And, uh, and then I teach also a class for um, the certified, certified teachers. And that's explain, a two-day class. Explain what it is, a uh, certified teacher. Yeah. So the certified teachers, they learned how to make like all of this. This is the example of the uh, statuette on the first day. Mm. And uh, they learned how to uh, work with the wrappers because most of the people in the first day class, the basic class, they learn how to mummify the statuette with old t-shirts that's mm -hmm. the you know basic class and that's really fun because everybody has old t-shirts at home and it's good for them to know how what to do with just t-shirts and powerball but on the certified teachers class they used to they learn how to use the wrappers and all of the uh, most not all of them because there's too much most of the related products we, we, we work with like pepper plus 
uh, how to do the pyroplast mix, how to make the crackled paste. You see the little bolero that she has here. Mm -hmm. It's made with uh, crackled paste. And how to work the relief decoration, which is one uh, fabric I really love. I did uh, a class uh, actually with that on canvas when I did um, the, the network uh, canvas with the, you know, uh, with the fiber uh, art symposium. Yes. Uh -huh. So that's the class. Yeah, that I worked a lot with the, fa the relief decoration for that uh -huh. canvas. True, and true. they learn how to work with every, uh, you know, how to make a, a base made uh, with art stone, a full fini of art stone. So they learn a lot. It's a lot in two days, actually, but, you know, they all love it. And they come, they go back home with two beautiful pieces and oh, yes. uh, they're certified. They're certified and they give classes after that. At, so uh, they can give classes home. After, after that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have a few comments and questions for you. Bree saying this is fascinating. Penny Platt, thanks for sharing your skills. Rosie Pont uh, Peeper is saying the, the former one you showed, it does look like metal. I think is the okay. for rust. Rose Pontilio, what is, what is it? Thin copper wedding that you have on the rust one? The rust one, the what she, she asked? I think, well, she asked, what is it? Thin copper wedding, I think this one, yes. Okay, well, that's all made. That's uh, really uh, all made of uh, aluminum paper. Wow. Actually, aluminum paper and there's some wires in it. So it's really something I, I innovated myself to this one. And uh, uh, it's infinite what we can do now with it. Because, you know, Pepper Paul, when I first learned of it, was really fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, I, like you saw, and uh, it's, I loved it. You know, I like to wrinkle the fabric on a statuette. And, uh, but after that, when you've done the first uh, basic class with fabric, you like to use uh, other techniques other, things, other than yeah. fabric too. Yeah. So yeah. it's a textile hardener, but it hardens other things too. Uh -huh. you know, not just textile. Yeah. And then you have to explore, right? Uh, Regan yeah. is saying... Yeah. How is power pole different from PVA glue? It's not a glue. No, uh, people sometimes, I don't know what PVA glue though, but it's really not, not a glue and there's nothing that compares to it uh, really. So it's really, um, it's not a glue at all. And it's not toxic. Maybe that's, that's the most uh, important thing I, I have to say if I, uh, and it hardens like uh, in one day, like when I give a basic class in the morning, they build up the statuette, you know, out of uh, uh, aluminum form, uh, aluminum foil to make the forms and everything. And then they mummify it with uh, wraps, uh, t-shirt uh, strips. And in the afternoon, it starts to harden. Like in two to three hours, it starts to harden. So at the end of the day, it's hard when you touch it. I don't know about the glue. So, you know, that may be the difference because our product hardens quite fast mm -hmm. so uh, and plus you the you next could day it's hard you could leave this in the weather like you show the herons and you wouldn't yeah. be able to do that yeah. with pva glue Giselle Cabral, yeah. sorry it's, yeah i said probably yeah, yeah. Giselle Cabral, hello liz is an excellent teacher i've taken several live classes with her and she changed my life Brenda Helfrich, Liz, do you drive on the left in Montreal? Uh, oh, in Montreal, no, we drive, um, voyons, we drive on the right side. Okay, good. <laughs> Not on the left, no. Uh, Bree saying, Liz, the, tech, the enamel technique is amazing. Will you be teaching it soon, please? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to because that's why I, I talk about it in the uh, in here in the interview because yes. I really uh, I gave lots of classes already and uh, I intend to make more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Elena is saying, can you mix powder pole and polymer clay? Sculpt the doll in polymer clay or paper clay and dress her in fabric with powder pole. Yes, uh, you have to uh, put the pepper ball on top of the clay before you dress her, though. So uh, I would suggest to uh, use also pepper plus because clay, that kind of clay may be a little bit more fragile. So what I used to do before I learned how to do the rose clay, that's the clay we make ourselves with pepper ball. 
Uh, I used to work with, uh, you know, just ordinary clay, uh, air drying clay. And uh, I used to put one coat of pepper pearl after I finished doing my uh, forms and then two coats of pepper plus mix and then another coat of pepper pearl just to make sure that it's not going to break. Okay. Sarah Mason wants to know what you need to buy to get the rust look. So for the rust look, it, you can use black or gray. This one uh, is made with uh, black underneath uh, the, all of this. And I did use the uh, rose clay that I make, made myself too. That's why all of the, um, you don't see the mummification of the strips of the cotton on it, you know. It's all made with the rose clay that we make uh, with Prevapol products. And then you need Paviplastin uh, art stone. You need uh, Sienna paver color. You need sea blue paver color. And you need acrylic, that's the uh, burnt umber mm -hmm. also. Fair. So I think that's mostly it. Katie is asking, have you ever added Paver Paul to a porcelain object as the underlying base instead of tin, foil, or fabric? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. On a porcelain object? Have you ever added Paver Paul to a porcelain object as the underlying base instead of making it of tin foil or fabric? So I, I believe I've she gets a like, porcelain and then uses the Paver Paul on top. I guess it would work because Paver Paul sticks on, uh, on glass. I'll show you here. Uh, I did that class not so long ago with you guys, Curious Mondo, and it, it's all glass and it's sticked to the glass, see? So, yeah, you can do that. Uh, maybe porcelain is, uh, you know, shiny. There's something I haven't tried myself, so I'm not sure what she means exactly. Uh -huh. But uh, it goes a lot on top of uh, lots of things, yeah. You'd have to try. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's what that's I true. say to people, try it. Yeah, and of course, if you want to know about these classes uh, online, CuriousMondo.com, Instant Access Courses, we look for her by instructor and you will see her courses. Now, when you are playing with Power Paul and you decide to turn this into a hobby or even into a business if you get the certification to teach, storage can become a place, a, a thing, right? So Liz has prepared a video for us talking about that part. Let's watch. And here is my paper pole, uh liquid boxes that it's all stored here on the, these uh, stack here on these shelves. So that's the pre space I primarily use uh, for uh, the liquid paper pole. So this is where I leave my paper pole related products. I had shelves to stack them on. They were already here, luckily for me. So this is all the stacks of shelves for all the related products relating to Paverpol. You're very organized. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, you need to be when you're a distributor. <laughs> I have to say, if, when I was a teacher, you don't need so much products if you're just a, a, a certified teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're a distributor, you need to have more, uh, more products for sure. Yes. yes, that's true. Brenda is saying, I love relief decoration. Gwendolyn Domingo, do you give online classes? I can answer that. Yes, she does. CuriousMondo.com. Not only on Instant Access courses, you have the past courses that she's given here. She was part of the Fiber Symposium from last year. Uh, she has more coming, so check on upcoming as well. Melody Carr, I wish she was handling it while she talked about it. What, what do you want us to handle? She will show more pieces now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, awesome. So let's see, you have that Oops. beautiful blue lady behind you. Talk to us about the technique that you okay. use, the one that has a hat. Okay, I, I have my light that went off, but anyways, I'll check it out after. You're looking good. Um, yeah, okay, so the blue lady, I mean, with the porcelain, uh, look, the porcelain, I'll I have guess. this one here, well, maybe this, this one, yeah. 
Oh, yes. Uh -huh. This one is really, yeah. That's a technique uh, I also developed. Uh, again, it was Josie DeRue that taught us that in some master classes we took with her uh, a couple of years ago. And I really, it was infinite for me. I'll show you another one I made with this one. So it's all done with Pepper Paul Transparent. See, I have two. And you can do like uh, all of the, uh, the clothing, like on this one here, the, the one with the, uh, the bag, the shopping bag, I call her the shopaholic. Oh my it's gosh. all made like the pants, it's not fabric. You see, it's all made with aluminum foil. It's a special technique though, that uh, you have to uh, do with the foil for it to, to be stiff like this. Mm -hmm. And it's all uh, uh, printed napkins. Wow. So it's a, t a special technique you have to learn. It's infinite what you can do. It's really, really fun. And when I started that, you know, again, it was uh, something we get, I gave in a class also in Quebec in a uh, uh, master class here, like for, to 30, 30 people at least. So, and I'd show, I'll show you some more that I gave with Curious Mondo I have here on hand. Oh, yeah. So this is done with the, yeah, that's a ballerina I showed uh, in one of the classes. And it's the Pepper Paul uh, Peach Tone, we call it. It's really skin tone. It's just, they call it peach now. But it's made with uh, just that and relief decoration for the skirt. So relief decoration, I really love because you can have it stand up like that stiff. Mm -hmm. Or it can be on a statuette very, you know, close to her body if you want. And you see the little bolero was made with pepper sand. So that's another product that uh, I really love when it, uh, that went out. I think it was in 2016. I did like so many stuff with pepper sand. Uh, uh -huh. You can do like lots of texture. The hair is done with pepper sand as well. And, uh, you know, I'll show you another piece I made here that's different. I think nobody really saw it. That's a piece that's quite heavy, so, but I put it beside me. So it's all done with uh, Pavisan. See all the texture? Oh, wow. Yeah, yes. so that's really, really something. Uh, so this piece was a bit longer to do because I wanted the Pavisan to drip like that, uh, you know, uh, be behind her. So I had to leave her um, lying down on two bricks. And this was uh, like in, uh, in, the, in the air, there was a mm -hmm. space between the two bricks. So that's why it did all those dripping uh, that stayed like that. Gorgeous. So it's really, really, yeah. So that's different too. Would this so, piece be well, safe so in the weather as well? Yes, yes, because I made uh, lots of uh, herons with lots of textures like that, some small I call them table herons. They're not like the big ones you saw uh -huh. outside. They're a bit uh, smaller. I have them. I have. No, it's outside. Sorry. <laughs> it's outside in the garden. It's been there like for, for uh, four or five years outside, actually, uh -huh. in the summer and winter. And uh, it has lots of texture and it never changed. And I sold a lot of them. Those herons, I sell them in a gallery. Okay. They're really popular. They're give, smaller give than the idea. big ones. Give us an idea of price, for example, for these small herons. I think those herons are 650 Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very I cool. think so. Well, I would have to check, Shahar, but I think that's the price. But that's an idea for people. And what about yeah. a statuette just like the one you showed us? Well, this one would be the same price because it takes the uh, same amount of time. Mm -hmm. But if I make a small statuette that's uh, a bit like easier to do, then it's maybe half that price. Okay. If you uh, make them too high, you won't sell them. So you have to you know, be careful not to, yeah. <laughs> and where, where do you usually sell them? Do you sell online, in galleries, shows? What's the I usually process? sell them in galleries and shows. Yeah, mm -hmm. shows. Very good. Jane right, Meyer right both... now it's been hard though. Say it again? Yeah. Say it again. Right now it's been hard because oh, yeah. there's no shows that have been going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully soon. Uh, Jane yeah. Blows, what is the product in the squeeze bottle on the right hand of your bookshelf? Do you have a squeeze product? bottle? Yes. 
No, on the I don't. Right hand side of the book. Well, okay. Doesn't matter. Maybe it's not uh, uh, behind me. It must be. Um, no. Okay. Melody Carr is saying, I just wanted to see her handling Powerpole. Maybe open a container. I did not realize until a minute ago that it, it is a, a, a liquid, like a liquid. We have a tutorial coming up, so you will see, right? Uh, Peeper, I love the ballerina. I watched her being made and loved it. Uh, let's do something. You prepare a studio tour as well, right? For us? Yes. So let's take a watch on how this works. As you can see, this is where I give the paper pile workshops. And if I bring the three tables together, then we can sit up to six people, seven including me, and everybody has, has enough space to work on. And I have my sink here, which is very handy for paper pal, as you all know. Uh, right now, I'm exhibiting, uh, I'm preparing for an exhibition, and all my statues, I brought them all uh, in, the, in my workshop to visualize and to see which ones I will uh, exhibit. So you can visit with me. So all of the techniques I've worked with are shown here. This is the latest uh, technique, the rust technique, and I made a video tutorial for that one. It will be ready soon. And those are all of my statues stacked on the shelves there. There's really a whole lot, so I do need to exhibit them, that's for sure. And right here, this is the space where I stack all the paper pulp products and the related products we use for my own use and for my workshop. So that's what I need when I work with. Not more than that, because uh, I have, um, you know, other spaces in the house to uh, stack all of the products I need for the distributors. But in my workshop, that's all really that I need. And I will show a short demo of the enamel technique. This is the technique that I had innovated two years ago. I was supposed to go in Holland to teach it, but then I made a tutorial for that one and I'm going to make more, more tutorials. And so this, this is the short demo, it will be on the enamel technique. It's really a colorful, you know, colorful technique that you can make with that, it's really fun. So this is it. So this is the infinite room and maybe one day you'll come and visit me in this beautiful infinite room. Liz, we all want to go there someday. <laughs> it's yes, really a happy I would love place. That. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, yes, it is. The studio is in your house, correct? So you have access right now. Yes. Okay. We have some yeah. artists that the studio is not in the house. So due to quarantine or lockdown, they cannot access at the moment. But oh. yours is there, right? Uh, luckily for me, yes. <laughs> Good. Uh, let, me, let me see here. The squeeze bodies. Okay, supply. Supply. Oh, I think, I think she was looking at your storage, and oh. she saw some squeeze bottles there. Yeah, those are the two hundred and fifty millimeters of uh, Pavipal. Okay. M yeah, so that's a, a small sample. If you if you like, like if people just want to try it then they can use that and uh, if they just want a small quantity, but we, we really uh, stock them much less of them because we really sell the 1,000 uh, gram uh, containers. A 1,000 gram container would be enough to how many pieces if I am creating you the could statuettes? Make like three, you can make three statuettes like this. Okay. So this is a statuette that's all made with fabric. So that's uh, mostly like uh, the fabric, uh, the, mo the basic class. So you mm -hmm. can see that, you know, she's all made with uh, fabric with the black paper pole. So a thousand gram container, you can make approximately three statuettes like this. So good, pretty yes. good. Yeah. Uh, Jane is saying, I am in awe with the beauty of your pieces. People, I'm enthralled with those ladies that look like they're wearing porcelain. Will she be doing a class on, the, on this on Mondo? We have a ton store for you. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I know. I think I'll be working a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So 
Uh, Liz, let's show a couple more pieces before we go into the tutorial. Okay. And guys, this is the last chance you have to be asking questions. So if you have any questions, send them over right now. We want to, first of all, of course, thank you being here and interacting with us. Just a reminder that you see some sites on the bottom of the screen. Paul America, of course, is for the United States. Mummificationart.com is Liz's website. There is also paverpaul.ca if you're in Canada in a, in a different place. And uh, paverpaul.com, you go under distributors and you will see a list of where the distributors are in the whole world. So wherever you are, you can, you can get it. So go take a look. And also don't forget that next week, also Thursday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time, we'll be back here with Banda Helfrich from South Africa. And then she's going to talk to her about her town and her art as well. So let's see, Liz, some of your pieces. It's so exciting every time you, you look. For me, if I had to define Liz in one word would be refinement. That's what I see coming from all your pieces. Well, thank you. It's really something that, uh, you know, I've developed uh, in, in a lot of years because my first statuettes weren't as refined, but they were like more um, rough looking, like everybody when it, they start private ball. And then I became more and more, like you say, uh, perfectionist with, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the human body. And in one of some of the classes I taught on Curious Mondo, I did. I have no sound. Uh, do I, no, you don't hear me? Do you hear me? Yes, yes, everything's fine. <laughs> okay. So in for Curious Mondo, I did lots of, uh, a few classes where I showed a lot of uh, the um, accents on human proportions. So here I'll show you one that I made with, uh, you know, I think I showed it on uh, one of the classes. It's, it's all made with granite, this one too. So it's yeah. really fun to uh, work the granite. And all of the, the uh, again, the, um, the clothing is made with aluminum foil. So it's another technique that uh, we did. I did with the same thing as the girl you saw with the porcelain, uh, the porcelain uh, technique. Mm -hmm. So it's the same technique we use for the clothing. So it's not fabric, it's all aluminum foil and you can use the granite over it or you can use the porcelain uh, technique or even uh, another technique too. Sorry about that. I'm just putting some more. So I'll show you one more. This one too, you can see it here. Gorgeous. Well, eh? Yeah, so that's, you can make it wave like that. It does a more modern look actually, than the uh, basic statuette, which I still love, by the way. This is uh -huh. one other that I love with uh, the, the fabric. It's really nice because what I like about the fabric uh, that you put pepper pole on is all the wrinkles it does, you know, mm -hmm. all of the texture that you can make with the, the textiles, different textile you use. So uh, again, it's infinite. It's yeah. really an infinite medium. I have one more. And I want to show because it's a class I'll show with Curious Mondo this sum next summer. I'll just hold it because it's never good to hold a statuette like that. You have to hold it by the base all the time. Okay. So be careful because it's still, especially this one is heavy. So I gave lots of classes on uh, this technique. So what I basically do, I ask the, the girls to uh, find a base that they like and bring it. And then... When we make the statuette, we try to make the crackled paste you see here that's serving as her clothing. So we try to uh, do that the same color as the base. Wow. So then they use paper colors to make that. Uh -huh. so, so this one I used some uh, paper color white and uh, light, uh, like light yellow oak. And it's all done with the art stone paste that's uh, on top of her body. So she's not mummified with stripped t-shirt. She's mummified with the uh, clay, paper uh -huh. clay. Very cool. Yeah, so it's, and, uh, and if that's one, gonna be shown. Yes, uh, July five to seven, we will be live. Yeah. And when Curious Mondo broadcasts a class or a full course, you can watch everything for free. So if you go to upcoming courses on Curious Mondo, put your name and email so you, you get the reminders, you don't forget about it. I think we are already showing the, oh, 
it went there for a second. But we are going to show this tutorial. But before we do, tell us, Liz, what you cover in this tutorial. I only cover how to put the skirt on because that's a tutorial I will be showing mm. uh, with uh, probably with you, Curious Mondo. Uh -huh. So I don't want to divulge that, uh, you know, it's, it's still a secret. Okay, good. <laughs> and, but I, I, I show the piece that I made with uh, the Paverpol. So this is all Paverpol and uh, Paver colors uh -huh. and a bit of acrylic. And I show how to fix it on the statuette. So that's, that's at the fantastic. stage that you see, that's what you'll see. Yes. During these interviews, all the tutorials are very short, but it gets you uh, to an introduction on the product. So, for example, you're going to be seeing her using the power pole. So uh, that, that's what we are going for here, not to teach the yeah. whole thing, but to show no. how the products are used. Correct? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So let's watch. Okay, so now this is done. All my cracks have been uh, painted in with the uh, copper. I've also dry brushed my, my wood base and with uh, the same uh, champagne, metallic champagne. And now I will fix my figurine, my statuette, so it will be fixed forever. I have my same paper plus mix that we had when we did the wrappers. And I will simply pour some in the hole, the small brush or you can even take uh, anything you have to just pour it in. And I will add some here on, on the metal rod. This will take time to dry, but it's okay. Uh, it, will be, uh, it will be very, very sturdy. Maybe take some of the excess off. Okay, so that's done. Now the skirt. I have my other mix of paper plus with prepared with transparent. Again, it's just like a thick paper plus mix you need to uh, make. And I will look again how I'm going to dress her. Once I'm really, really certain, then that's when I'll, I'll apply some paper plus. It needs to be like really well, you know, well, uh, well, well uh, applied on the uh, on the figurine. Okay. Okay. So I've decided to put her very high on her body, and I've also cut rounded uh, edges because all of my others had rounded edges. <laughs> That's the only reason. Uh, you can do whatever you want and again uh, this piece can also serve as a top piece if you prefer or you can do two when i suggest when you do the pouring technique you make two trays and make two uh two um, mixes of uh enamel so then you can decide whatever you want so now i will apply some paper plast here my thick paper plus mix, a little bit here too. Not sure what is going to uh, be touching the body, but I know that it's up to here. So you have to put it on both both surfaces. In the back, I know my skirt is going to be uh, more touching everywhere, so I might as well put some there too. And this will, you know, be more transparent while, while, when it's going to be drying. So that's, it's a go.
And now here too, you need to apply some here and here just a little bit. It's already sticking. So this is a very hot art and craft uh, dryer. It's not a hair dryer, but it's very hot. It can even, you know, burn my fingers. But once I do it just a little bit, it really sticks fast to it. But a hair dryer, very hot air dryer, will will uh, work also. It's just more no more noisy, so I prefer this one. Okay. That's cool. So actually you're using the puffer plus there, the mix, as a glue, right? To make sure it's, yes, it sticks. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's very cool. And that's the final it piece really that sticks. you have with you. Yes, I wanted to show it. So here she is with uh, all done and this the bolero is really uh done with little glass beads. And it's a special uh, way to do it as well. And I did the hat the same way. It's just a cut piece of the enamel. I cut it. It's another enamel piece that I uh, had done. And I just cut it like that and uh, fixed it with pyroplasmix. And she's all gorgeous. done with wrappers. She's mummified with wrappers. And I wanted her thin. So if you want like a thinner material on, uh, you know, on hands and legs and arms, Wrappers is a bit thinner than uh, the t-shirts uh, strips. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Now, for a person that is interested, so as they are watching, and maybe like me, what attracts me so much to this medium, first of all, I, can use, I love textiles, so I can use textiles in a whole different way. It also allows us really to work with mixed media. Like you said, uh, you have small beads there, you use aluminum. So it's really infinite possibilities that you have here. It's very attractive. And the pieces, the end pieces are gorgeous. So if a person is starting, okay, I'm going to take a course and I think I'm going to go down this, this road. What kind of investment will they be making with products itself just to get started? Well, they would need, uh, I would buy like just 1,000 gram, maybe it's a 100 uh, gram of pyroplast. And even not, like if they want to just start the normal statuette, you just need pyropol actually. You don't need the pyroplast because things, people think that uh, we have absolutely need pyroplast to uh, add after you've done the uh, statuette, uh, on the statuette, but to make it go outside. But you don't, if you do use a good t-shirt, uh, then you don't need the pavaplast. So it's only pavapol, fabric, old t-shirts, and maybe you need some, uh, not maybe, you need some electrical wires. Uh, it's not really costly. I, no, I, sorry, Ashar, I, I, I have the cost somewhere. I would have to look, but it's really not costly uh, at all. Maybe $20 to do a statuette. That's what it would cost you Which to is make nothing. one small one. It's nothing no. to get started on, on a new journey, really, a new medium. No, so, of course, no. the prices will vary depending on the country you're in. But it's a yeah. very, very small investment for something that is very addicting, right? Yeah, because you can use recycled objects. When you first start, you can make a sitting one using a rock for her to sit on. Then you don't even need the iron rod for her to stand up. Because if you want a statuette standing up like this one, she has in her leg an iron rod. So that's a 316 inch iron rod that you buy. It's one meter long. You can cut it the size you want. But if you don't have that, you can have her sit, mm -hmm. sit on a, a base that you have, a, a broken brick or a rock, whatever you have. So it's really fabric and pavapal for your first ones. That what I would, that's what I would suggest. And in most cases, it is safe to put outside. I, th I think the exception is with the transparent, correct? Yeah, because the transparent, if you use, uh, we use the transparent to on printed fabrics or uh, we tint it with our own, uh, do, with the paper colors. But then, you, 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 you know, there are some colors that are, uh, you know, harder, that are easier to uh, being affected by the UV rays. Mm. 
And if you use a printed fabric, you don't know if that fabric has a uh, good quality in it and it can change with the, even if you varnish it, I wouldn't suggest it to put it outside, no. Okay. Uh, Leslie is asking, I assume it's air dried? Yes, it dries by the air, but you can activate it with a hair dryer Sally while Mason. you're working. Sally Mason is asking, could you show the enamel look one more time? I love that style. Yeah, I'll show her another one. That's my first one I made. Mm. Okay, let me see here. Beautiful style. We have a lot of uh, beautiful, awesome. This is gorgeous. Uh, Rose Pontini is saying, ah, something enamel excited for the class. I love the colors. Okay. Do the enamel pieces need to have varnish added in case you put them outside? I would not put them outside, not my enamel pieces, because I don't want to affect the enamel sheen on the, um, on, uh, you see the nice sheen it has, because uh, if you put a varnish in, maybe the varnish would show, because it's really, really shiny. So I would not put the enamel pieces outside. Every other, you know, you can mostly, every other you can put outside. But there are some sculptures that, you know, can be left inside. So. And Peeper wants to know, for the class that we have coming in July, how to create art stone clay statuette with a bird, what, what does she need to have material-wise when the class comes up? Uh, I think of a nice space because it will be good to do a sitting one for it's easier maybe for people and um, pepper pole I'm using for that one a mix of pepper pole bronze and black so it does the antique bronze look as you saw uh, it's behind me there but it's got it has the antique bronze look then and uh, you need art stone that's for sure uh, did that with hockey tape or wrappers Wrappers could be good uh, as well be because we do the clay on top of the wrappers. And I'll just look at it to help me. Yeah, that's, that's about all. Well, electrical wire for sure because and aluminum foil because uh, I always forget that because it, they're always there. You always need electrical wire for statuettes and aluminum foil. As the armature, right? Yeah, the armature. Liz, any final words to our folks watching you today? Yes, I'd like again to emphasize the fact that uh, it's, um, it's a medium we work with, you know, and it's an um, infinite medium. Uh, I myself am not finished uh, exploring with Paverpol. I constantly have ideas. Uh, it's never ending in my head. So I think that's uh, all I want to say is people, you know, I sometimes see people that are a little bit afraid of starting something or, you know, asking me, sometimes they email me, do you think this will work, This, do you think that? I, I just want to tell them, just try it also because it's, you know, don't be scared. Just one day you want to create, you're not sure what, then just do something, you know, out of the blue. You don't need to always be um, tutored also to try something. It's good to just go ahead and try it and don't be afraid. Yes. Have fun, mostly. <laughs> I think that's how you discover so many new techniques, correct, for with this medium? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Thank exactly. you so much. Liz, I, I, you know, I feel like I've been in your home. You introduced me to your yes. beautiful city. And I learned so much. So thank you very much for being here with us. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. And of course, thank you very much for being here, interacting, sending questions. So I hope you have learned a lot. Maybe you're new to PowerPoint, maybe you have already experimented a lot, but the fact is that you had a different approach and introduction to this medium. If, he, if it's your first time, well, those websites that you see at the bottom of the video, you are going to know all the line of products and, of course, how it works uh, in the different ones. PowerPowerAmerica.com for the U.S., uh, uh, MomificationArt.com to know more about Liz and her pieces and her courses, of course. Uh, also, PowerPow.ca, other distributors in Canada, PowerPow.com. Click on distributors and you're going to see the list. There is one 
there for you, not only to sell products, but to teach you how to use the, this medium. And of course, if you're interested in making a career out of this, like Liz does, uh, they all offer certifications as well. In our case, CuriousMondo.com, you have all the information for the uh, certification. And Liz, as well as other Poverpol uh, instructors, we have a list of uh, courses that you can take to get started. Wow, a lot for you, right? I hope you note that down. But if you didn't, don't fret, because this stays on. This interview will leave whatever you're watching now. Uh, so you can rewatch, you can send to people, you can show people around you. Uh, I experience here in the US the fact that it is still a medium to be explored full force, which gives you the opportunity probably to be the only artist in your area doing this. How cool is that? How many times does that happen, right? So it, it allows you to sell up your pieces on art shows, on galleries, uh, to teach. So take a look and all this because you, you won't regret you're going to fall in love with this don't forget the next thursday i'll be back here and this time we were invited to know south africa so we are going to see the city talk to brenda and learn a lot with the tutorial as well so join me again next week and for those of you that know curious mondo in about an hour we are back here with a fast track course so tune in thank you so much for being here until next time.